Hello, my fellow broke aristocrats. Thanks for tuning in to get again today. So today is a really interesting topic and uh, I'm glad that we're having this conversation and I'm glad that you could join me to have this important conversation. So the conversation today is, are you sick and poor or healthy and frugal? So we've talked about this in the past and today we're going to talk about it again and that is the difference between being poor versus being frugal and specifically today as a doctor I'm going to be addressing some of the habits that we associate with poverty and how those habits are associated with ill health and a shorter life expectancy. Um, there are eight sub, uh, there are eight topics. I just want to make a note because I do want to talk about one thing. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we associate, it's top of the list for shortening our life expectancy that is associated with poverty. The number one thing, there's a lot of stuff we could talk about, but the number one thing that doctors talk to their patients about is smoking, smoking cigarettes. And in fact, we now suspect that smoking cigarettes is one of the main indicators that will determine how long a person lives. In fact, it's been determined that people who smoke cigarettes live about 10 years less they, have a, they die 10 years earlier than people who do not smoke. And not surprisingly, the poor, uh, the working class, the people who are at the lower income level tend to be more inclined to smoke cigarettes. One of the things that I love to do as a broke aristocrat is help people live the good life on uh, very little money or a fixed income or if you don't have a lot of money you can still live the wealthy life you can live the good life if you are someone smoking cigarettes I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to stop smoking smoking is expensive and it's associated with a shorter life expectancy so if you want to go from health from poor and broke to healthy and frugal, one of the first things you can do is to not allow cigarette smoking in your home. So it's not just you smoking, it's everybody in the house is smoking and that means that air quality in the home is poor and everyone's life expectancy can be affected. And we're seeing asthma in children, we're seeing children at risk for certain types of cancer, we're seeing increased risk for um, uh, pulmonary disorders like um, obstructive pulmonary disorders, uh, not just asthma, but COPD, uh, emphysema. Again, not just with the person who's smoking the cigarette, but everybody who happens to be living uh, in the home where the smoke, uh, smoker lives is going to be suffering. They're all suffering financially and they're suffering physically due to poor air quality. So first thing is to not allow cigarette smoking in your home, not just for you, but anybody else who happens to live there. Uh, the second thing that's associated with poverty uh, and ill health that we can convert to healthy and frugal is drinking alcohol. Now there's been some studies that suggest that mild alcohol consumption may actually improve our health, but it's debatable whether or not that's actually true. And the reason why we think it might actually not be true is because when they queried the people who did not drink, they found that many of them were recovering drug and alcohol addicts. And so consequently, they already had ill health before going into the study. And so for that reason, we say simply abstaining from alcohol is probably your best bet. If you want to have a little bit of punch uh, at a holiday party or an occasional glass of wine, that's fine. But overall, if you want to save money, if you want to be frugal and live the good life, you really want to abstain from alcohol. We've seen this in some of the blue zone studies about moderate living and temperance being associated with long life, specifically the Loma Linda study uh, with the Seventh-day Adventist, which was done uh, here in Loma Linda, California. Uh, I live in California, I don't live in Loma Linda, and I'm fascinated by that study because it's based on Victorian values about health. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventist is a Christian uh, community 
uh, that uh, got started uh, during the Victorian times. It was a group of, uh, it was a Christian community that was dedicated to optimal health and clean living and temperance. And in fact, we do see that they um, have the uh, longest life expectancy of any community in the United States. So uh, drinking, drinking alcohol, uh, excessive drinking is associated with poverty, uh, poor life condition, and uh, ill health. And uh, those people who abstain from alcohol are more functioning. Uh, they tend to do their job better. They tend to have a happier outlook on life. And if you have a happier outlook on life, if you are able to do your job more efficiently, that is associated with an increase in income. So not only have you stopped spending money on alcohol, you've now been able to experience better health and that translates into increased in income. So number two is drinking. We want you to abstain from uh, drinking alcohol. Number uh, three, uh, going with that is recreational drug use. Uh, recreational drug use is not, again, not only expensive, but it's associated with ill health. Now there's been a huge movement in the United States uh, to promote things like marijuana. And marijuana, if you're talking about it from a prescription perspective, can be very helpful for treating certain types of severe medical conditions like nausea in chemotherapy, uh, in cancer patients, helping to uh, alleviate that. But for the general population, uh, chronic use of marijuana is actually associated with depression. Uh, it's also associated with poor work function, poor cognition, trouble with memory. Uh, and, and again, when you have a poor memory, uh, depression, uh, trouble learning things, uh, poor, poor skills when, when your, um, when your uh, job skills are actually diminished due to recreational drug use, again, we're seeing poverty. So you're not only just spending money for the recreational drugs, you're losing money because you're not as efficient at your job when you use those drugs. I want to add here pharmaceuticals as well, like opioids, uh, they can be highly addictive. And so even in a case of prescription drug use, we can see addiction and we really uh, try to monitor that. And I know that many doctors now are becoming very conservative about who they prescribe uh, opioids to because they are so addictive. And I think that's a really good, uh, good idea for minor aches and pains. Uh, there are uh, simple and natural solutions uh, that are not addictive. Uh, I might go ahead and do a video on that in the future. Number four, uh, associated with sick and poor uh, uh, behaviors is eating junk food. Junk food is definitely associated with poverty. The poor tend to eat more junk food. In poor neighborhoods, we see more uh, junk food restaurants. Uh, and not surprisingly, we see more obesity, more diabetes, more coronary artery disease, and it's associated with poverty. And in a, a frugal person, a frugal person would be taking that money and they would be uh, cooking from scratch. So if you look at the average uh, Happy Meal or if you look at the average uh, meal that you order at a fast food restaurant, say it costs $7. For $7, I can make a nutrient dense meal that serves, that I can serve to four people uh, that is predominantly plant based. I'll give you one example uh, chicken and rice cooked together, brown rice and chicken cooked together in one pot with some uh, uh, peas and carrots. Uh, that is a one pot wonder. I, ca I can serve that with a salad and probably get it to about $7 and feed four people. So junk food is a poor place to be putting our money and it's actually associated with poverty and ill health. And again, you guessed it, when you are sick, you can't work. When you have poor health, you're not as motivated to work. And when you have poor health, you're not as, as efficient as at your work. And so junk food is associated with poverty, cooking from scratch, eating mostly plant-based, beans, uh, uh, whole grain brown rice, uh, quinoa, uh, vegetables, lean animal protein if you're gonna be eating it is not expensive. It's actually cheaper than junk food. And that's the way a frugal broke aristocrat eats. And so that is why broke aristocrats are healthier.
All right, number five is playing the lottery. Uh, this is one that I see a lot. I have even family members who I've talked to about this. That's a horrible use of uh, a place for your money to go. A broke aristocrat knows precisely where their money is going. They know where every dollar is going. They account for every dollar. And if you've got a dollar to spend on a lottery ticket, you can take that dollar and you can pay off your debt. You can invest in an index fund, or you can go and buy yourself uh, a head of uh, a head of uh, a good quality uh, lettuce or a cabbage and cook it up and uh, eat a nutrient dense meal. Uh, playing the lottery is associated with poverty and uh, ill health, and taking the money instead and saving it for a rainy day or investing it into nutrient dense food is associated with frugal living. And that is what we broke aristocrats do. Broke aristocrats do not gamble. We are an old style Victorian temperance movement here at Broke Aristocrat. We believe in those values. And so we do not gamble, we do not drink, and we do not take drugs. And so consequently, while we may not have a lot of money, we are smart with the money we have and we enjoy good health. Number six is too much TV viewing. I'm definitely guilty. I don't own a TV, but sometimes I like to watch a little Netflix. And that is also associated with ill health. And that is because it's associated with sitting, sedentary living, watching the TV, passive activity. It doesn't engage the mind. And it's associated also with being antisocial. When you're staring at the TV, you're not interacting with other people. You're not talking to other people. You're not reaching out to the community. And you're not physically moving. You're not exercising. The next time you're sitting there at about six, seven o'clock at night and you decide you want to watch the TV, turn the TV off instead and go for a walk. Say hi to people in your neighborhood. Say hi to the local dogs like I do. Get to know their names. You'll be interacting with other people and you'll be doing something good for your heart. The other thing you can do is you can join your local library and start reading, which is active learning, and that's better for brain health. It's frugal, it doesn't cost any money, and you've improved your health. So poverty associated with more TV watching, a broke aristocrat instead of watching TV is engaged in active learning and in uh, reaching out to the community, exercising, being physically active. Number seven is about the home, the environment. What kind of home do you have? Now, poverty is associated with sick homes. We've talked about air quality by making sure no one is smoking in the home, but we also wanna talk about the quality of cleaning products. Uh, chemicals found in cleaning products which uh, have to be broken down by the liver, uh, metabolized. And so what happens is the person that's cleaning the home using uh, toxic chemicals to clean the home, that individual is now being exposed to xenoestrogens and carcinogens on a daily basis. But a broke aristocrat will often make their own soap, they'll use natural products, or they'll go and get some uh, Dr. Bronner's, uh, which is a very inexpensive soap. You can buy a big thing of Dr. Bronner's, and it's an all-purpose soap. You can use it to do just about everything. I think you can even brush your teeth with it. So keeping your home clean of chemicals. Uh, chemicals, uh, toxic homes, sick homes are associated with poverty. Homes cleaned using natural products like vinegar, baking soda, and Dr. Bronner's soap, that's the broke aristocrat way. We clean the same way we did 100, 150 years ago. We use natural products and it works just fine. And finally, number eight, depression is associated with poverty and sickness. Uh, being depressed, feeling isolated, watching uh, social media that makes you feel bad about yourself just because you're not rich. There are plenty of great human beings that have walked this earth that did not have a lot of money. Mother Teresa, uh, Golda Meir, uh, I could go on and on and on, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, there are great people who have walked this earth that had money says nothing about your character. It says nothing about your worth as a human being. And so if you are spending time looking at social media, feeling bad about yourself, thinking you're a failure because you don't have a lot of money, that is not reality. It has nothing to do with reality. 
turn it off. Instead, translate your, uh, transform your depression into purpose and meaningful living. What is the meaning of your life? Why have you come to the world? What are you trying to do? How can you serve? How can you help? These are the things that are associated with happiness. Are you volunteering? Are you caring for those less fortunate than yourself? To live a meaningful life where you have contributed something that lifts the world up in some way because you were born. Now that, that is a great life. That is what it is to be a broke aristocrat. And you will always have a home here on this channel. Okay, I wanna thank you for watching this video of Broke Aristocrats. I must say I got rather excited covering this topic. Be sure and share, like, subscribe. Tell me what you're doing to love yourself and take care of yourself without breaking the bank. We don't care how much money you make. We care about the fact that you take care of yourself, you love yourself, and you serve the planet in ways that make a difference. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.